Well, Klaus Schwab tells us, you'll own nothing and be happy. Constantly, you see him, he's uh, with the World Economic Forum. wonder why he says that. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. This Labor legislation offers a real glimpse of this hideous future and how socialism will be imposed in Australia, disguised as a helping hand by a benevolent government. So much for the great Australian dream, which has now been reduced to only partly owning your own home. The economic security, the peace of mind and the sanctity of home ownership is something this Labor government and their Marxist confederates in the Greens would happily deny to the Australian people. Labor can't be trusted on housing. Two years ago it promised to fix the housing crisis. Labor promised $32 billion of taxpayers' money to build 1.2 million new homes by 2030. In two years, not a single home has been built. How could there be when there's virtually no one left able to build them? For all the millions of people Labor has brought to Australia, more than the entire population of Adelaide, only 51,000 were skilled workers and only 1,800 were qualified tradies. And that was in the 22-23 um, figures of 737,000 people that brought in. Only 51,600 approximately were skilled workers and of that only 1,800 were qualified tradies. So where's the investment in the Australian tradies? Where was Labor's support for One Nation's apprenticeship scheme? It wasn't. It hasn't been. Since you've been in two and a half years, you've done absolutely nothing about it. It's no wonder there are no new homes being built. And I hate to tell the Australian people, they won't be built very soon either. Labor's signature policy is the so-called Housing Future Fund, borrowing and investing $10 billion and building 30,000 affordable homes in five years from the returns. That's if they get returns. It works out at less than $84,000 per home, about $400,000 less than what a new home actually costs to build these days. And again, not a single home has been built. Labor makes announcements as if announcements alone fix the housing crisis. Labor makes these announcements while ignoring their own policies that drive the housing crisis. The worst of these is record immigration. Two years ago, Australia already had a shortfall of at least 650,000 homes. Labor has since allowed more than 1.5 million people to come to Australia, all of them needing a home that could be occupied by an Australian already living and working here, let alone the refugees or, the, or releasing those held in, um, as illegals in detention centres that also require housing. It doesn't make any sense at all, but then again, neither does this Labor government. This is the same government who moved their minister from Home Affairs into the housing portfolio, putting a fox in charge of the hen's house. Hey, you know, they're absolutely hopeless in their um, portfolios as, uh, as immigration minister and, and, um, and yet you know, to go into the housing portfolio is, you know, is just ridiculous or I should say home affairs. Our housing crisis is primarily an issue of supply and demand. High immigration increases demand when we should be reducing it. Lack of new housing restricts supply when we should be increasing it. High demand and low supply drive up prices and rents. Labor is not building homes to address low housing supply. Labor is not lowering immigration to reduce housing demand. Labor is making this housing crisis worse. No amount of worthless, empty Labor announcements will make the truth go away. The Greens are even worse when it comes to housing. They want the state to own it all, all of it, and Australians who own none of it. It's straight out of the Marxist playbook. Their call for rent freeze will, without any doubt, force landlords out of the market and reduce the availability of rental properties even further. They're called to get rid of capital gains and negative gearing 
will suppress property investment and also reduce the availability of rental properties. Greens don't understand that we must incentivise property investment to increase rental availability and reduce rental prices. We have to kick start we have to kick Labor and the Greens out if we're going to have a chance to fix this housing crisis. We have to implement One Nation's housing policy. One Nation will lower immigration to reduce housing demand. One Nation will ban foreign ownership of residential property to increase housing supply for Australians. New Zealand and Canada have done it, and even the coalition here has adopted this part of our policy. One Nation will relax restrictions on renting spare rooms and granny flats to improve housing availability. And One Nation will enable superannuation funds to invest some of an individual super as equity in the individual's home to improve housing affordability. Under this policy, Australians will own everything and be truly happy. They'll be happy not because some crackpot socialist tells them they will be, but because they are secure in their own home. One Nation will always stand against the encroachment of socialism being propagated by Labor and the Greens. We will stand against this useless legislation which does nothing to address the causes of the housing crisis and does everything to impose socialism on Australia. So One Nation will fight for Australians. And as my colleague Senator Malcolm Roberts indicated about NDIS, and that's what I've um, been told, is that new bills that are coming into play, you're going to have to have them NDIS, um, what can I say, um, friendly. No. Now the health, well, and I can basically back this up because I went to, I went to a, one of those um, companies that actually build these de demountable houses. Anyway, I said, oh, is this what you've got available? And they said, yes, but now we've got to um, take it down because the building codes have all changed, that we actually have to build bigger doorways and, and comply with a certain um, element of building now. So what we're doing now is adding the cost to new builds um, that people have to have their, these requirements in the housing market, which they will never possibly need. We have to be realistic about it because if that cost is going to be an extra fifty to sixty thousand dollars per build in Australia, Australians cannot afford it, and that needs to be addressed. If that is truly the case, just because there are some people in this country, and my heart goes out to them, who are disabled for whatever reason, but you don't impose on the rest of the country to have to build a house that they want to build for their own special needs, for their own needs, and you have to make it special needs for someone else who might visit or one day might buy it. Might, but the fact is we're actually imposing these restrictions on people. Another thing too that, that needs to be addressed with housing is apart from the foreign investment, investment that we have, which is driving up demand and, of course, it drives up the prices of houses and, of course, the banks loan out more money to the Australian people, so they're making more money out of um, interest repayments. But also, we really have to have a good look at the GST that people pay on the new houses, which is somewhere between, on a new build, is between 40 to 45 per cent GST on the cost of a house. That's how much it costs in building a new house. And that is just over the top. No wonder Australians can't afford it. The cost of housing in relation to what a person's wage in this country is just out of the realm. So for Labor to sit there and, and you know, the same old rhetoric, especially out of Senator Ayers, it's just, it's just pathetic. It's just laughable the way he sits there and he says, oh, well, you're against uh, the youth owning a home. It's all because I can't answer your questions um, with decent logic. It's like, let's go and blame the other side. Because I vote against this, this stupid dog of a, a bill which won't work, and I don't want to see taxpayers' money wasted or see a socialist government having ownership in their home and class swab is exactly what they're doing, is you'll own nothing and you'll be happy because the, because the governments are going to own your home. You know, honestly, people, think about it. What renovations and what you put in that house and you, you think that the government is going to back you up, their policies change all the time. Whoever's in government, you, have, you can't rely on this mob whatsoever who is ever in government here to think that that is going to see you through to the, to the end of your days and you're going to have, have true ownership in your own property. Think twice about it. I wouldn't trust them 
as far as can bloody kick them, this bloody mob that's here. And I think they're absolutely useless and hopeless in their policies. That's why no one voted for them today. They're sitting on the crossbench by themselves with what one crossbencher that actually supports them on this policy, because we can all see through it. It's actually a dog of a bill. It hasn't been well thought out. You haven't done any of that. So you abuse and you, and you throw snide remarks across the chamber as if none of us that care about the youth. Guess what? I've got four, four people out there that would dearly love to own their own homes. So you're saying, I don't care about them. I don't care about my nieces and nephews and, my, and the people that are with me. Yeah, that's got enough. No, I'm looking after their best interests. Unlike you, these false promises and offering the world, but you can't back it up. That's the problem with this Labor government. You're only chasing votes and you throw the money where you think it's going to do best to encourage these people to, to, to back you all the way. What, two years? Two years you've had the money there and you haven't built one home? Why? Why? I threw the chair. I, I asked questions and it is. Why? Not one house built, but $35 million has gone into administration fees. That tells you your bureaucrats are running it. They wouldn't have a clue about policies. They're not grassroots. They don't understand what the hell is happening out there. Yeah, yeah. They don't understand. The people dearly want to own their own home. But the fact is that when you keep doing the real issue here is the real issue is the high immigration that they bring the people into this country, one and a half million people in the country. That's your problem because they all have to have a house or somewhere to live in. And you keep bringing them out. The damage has been done. You can say now you're going to reduce the numbers, but it's too damn late. And that's another ruse by you and your government to actually say you're going to reduce the numbers. And it's not going to make a bit of damn difference. So now you're going to throw more money at it. That's all you do is these false promises. Oh, the $275 a year electricity, we're going to reduce it. Well, tell the poor people out there who've got increased electricity prices. What's that done for them? Absolutely nothing. I've never seen such a hopeless government with ministers that are so incompetent as this, this government is. Absolutely hopeless. You have no put thought into it. To be a member of parliament, you have to have vision for the future. You shouldn't lie to the Australian people. You shouldn't give them false, false promises that you can't see through yeah. because you purely want, are buying their vote. That's all you're doing now. Up until the next election, you're trying to um, just get the confidence of the people. We're going to do this and we're going to give you that. You've given them absolutely nothing. False hope, false lies. That's all this government has done. And you're going to continue down that path. But I am, I am proud of the people in this chamber, the coalition, the crossbench and the Greens that have not backed your policy. We may agree or disagree on certain parts of this policy, but the whole fact is we've seen through this, and I hope the people um, who are watching this or the people in the chamber um, up in the gallery, that you must understand that most of this whole chamber has voted against this bill because it is not right for the Australian people. It is all based on lies and false promises that you will never deliver to the Australian people. And it's a waste of taxpayers' dollars. When you show some real strength in this country by, by knocking back the immigration numbers that are coming into this country, that are taking up the housing that belongs to Australians, when you actually work with the councils and state governments to release more, more land, land for the building of homes, when you put money into some of these um, council areas or into these um, smaller communities that so they can actually have the infrastructure for water supply, sewage supply, because they're the ones that are struggling, that they can't provide the water or sewage or the infrastructure they need to open it up for more housing. When you can actually put out more apprenticeship schemes and encourage Australians to get up at their backsides and start working instead of paying a welfare payment for doing nothing, then we might be able to address the real problems that are affecting Australians. So it's about getting workers here in Australia working to provide the housing, the infrastructure and, of course, your forestry. That's another thing. You're shutting down the plantations to build your wind and turbines. So that's another thing. We're not going to have, we're not going to have that... Um, the needs of timber that we, that we rely on to build the housing as well. You are so far behind the eight ball, you're absolutely hopeless and um, 
I will not support this bill based on the fact it's a dog of a bill, it won't do anything, and it's not because I don't care about the Australian people, it's because you haven't got it right. <laughs>